All right, so I was crushing on this girl. She was tall, blonde, super cute, popular. She was a babe. Her name was Tiara. Then one day at recess in first grade, I was chasing her, running around. That's what you do when you like a girl. And I was running after her like crazy. Then all of a sudden, she stopped. And I was like, yes, she likes me. But no, she wound back her leg and bam, right in the spot. And I was like, oh. And I was bent over. My pants were completely wet. And I was defeated. Like, my crush crushed my dreams. Like, was it, was it love? I don't know. Like, I, I felt pretty one-sided to me. But we all remember our first love, right? We remember falling in love for the first time, yeah? Um, like, who remembers their first crush, playground crush, elementary school? We're all going to get in our feelings now. Um, who remembers their first kiss? It was seventh grade, mom and dad. Uh, who remembers their first, like, actual boyfriend or girlfriend that you count? Like, you know, the other ones didn't count. This one, was a, this one counted, you know. Um, and if you're dating or married here, who remembers your first date together? Like, these are special moments. And all of you remember that pursuit. Like, does she like me? Does he like me? Then you become official. But you remember, like, where and when, you, how they made you feel. You were Twitter pated. They were all you were thinking about. You were simping hard. You're whipped. You're in the honeymoon stage. You would do anything for them. Your love is on fire. We know this feeling with that special someone, and we know this feeling with God too, right? You remember how Jesus pursued you. You remember the first time you realized you were a sinner in need of a Savior. You remember that first time you realized how much Jesus loves you and how big and awesome and mighty God is. Then you became official. You accepted him into your life. And these moments happen over and over again when we no, like God is all we think about. God just consumes all of our thoughts, our actions. We just want more and more of him. Like our love for God is on fire. As a church, as the Waikiki Beach Gathering, I think we are in a very good place right now. Today is the beginning of year five. I think 2020 has been our best year yet. Like our connect groups are going strong. A lot of you guys are serving and stepping up and using your spiritual gifts. And our church is growing fast spiritually and in numbers. I think like half of you are new this year that are here today. There's a lot of momentum and we can see it and we know God is moving in our midst. We know this. And the church is the people and for our church to be on fire and to stay on fire, all of us need to be on fire for God. Like today we're going to see as a church how each of us can ignite the flame, how we can keep the flame burning and how we can make the flame grow. So together as a church, God can use us to his full potential to love him, love others, and make disciples. So you guys can open up your Bibles to Acts 2. Acts 2. This chapter of the Bible shows us how the first church ever began. And this happened after Jesus died on the cross and came back to life three days later. He was on earth for about 40 days telling people like, hey, look at me, hands in the air, look, it's good to be alive. And then one day, day 40, floated up into heaven, and Jesus is still alive in heaven today. Our God is not dead. Jesus is alive. But right before Jesus left in Acts 1-8, he said this to his disciples. He said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Jesus promised the Holy Spirit would work in and through the life of every Christian. And if you look at the beginning of Acts 2, you'll see the Holy Spirit came upon them. You guys can read the whole chapter 1 and 2 for yourself. Um, after the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples, a large crowd gathered, and then Peter gave an amazing sermon, sharing the good news about Jesus. And this large crowd that gathered responds to Peter's sermon right here in Acts 2, 37 through 41. So Peter gives this sermon, and then this is what the crowd responds. In verse 37, chapter 2, it says, Now when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what are we to do? Peter said to them, Repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
For the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far away and as many as the Lord our God will call to himself. And with many other words, Peter solemnly testified and kept on urging them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. So then, those who had received his word were baptized, and that day were added about 3,000 souls. So the church is the people. This is the first church. And right here, 3,000 people are added to the church. They just accepted Jesus as their Savior. And what happens next shows how the first church was on fire for God. They all just received the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit was consuming all of their life. God's love was pouring out of them onto others. And I think this is a very good example for us to follow. Like if you ever think about how you want to just be on fire for God, I think this is a great place to look right here, how the first church ever was on fire for God because of the Holy Spirit. So continuing in Acts 2, verse 42 through 47. Acts 2, 42, it says, They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone kept feeling a sense of awe, and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. And all the believers were together and had all things in common. And they would sell their property and possessions and share them with all, to the extent that anyone had need. Day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. They were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day those who were saved. So first we see that awe ignites the flame. In verse 43, it says, Everyone kept feeling a sense of awe. So our relationship with God is based on facts, not feelings. And if you've surrendered your life to Jesus, you are saved because of what Jesus has done for you on the cross, not what you do for God. And that is a fact. No matter how saved you feel one day, have a good day, a bad day, God stays the same because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what he did on the cross for you stays the same. But still, feeling a sense of awe helps our relationship with Jesus. Like the crowd of 3,000 people saw the signs and the wonders that the Holy Spirit was doing through the disciples that same day. And the disciples were speaking in tongues. And if you look at chapter 2, verse 7, you'll see that when a disciple would speak, everyone would hear it in their native tongue. So one person would speak one word, and everyone hear it in 17 different languages at the same time. They were just confused. Like, what is this? It's speaking in tongues. And they were in awe about the message of salvation that Peter was preaching in his awesome sermon. And they also knew about Jesus personally and saw his many miracles earlier. So all these signs and wonders were done for the purpose of confirming Jesus as the Savior. It was all pointing to salvation in Jesus. And they responded in awe in verse 37. The crowd was pierced to the heart. They were convicted and said, what are we to do? And Peter's like, yeah, accept Jesus as your Savior. Like they were in awe, and because of that, they accepted Jesus. The awe ignites the flame. And I accepted Jesus into my life when I was in first grade. I really needed that after what happened that year. But one night, I had a bad dream of where I would go when I die, and I did not know. Like I dreamed where I would go, and I saw hell. So I woke up screaming and crying, and then my mom came into my room And she explained to me that we deserve to go to hell because of our sin. But if Jesus is your Savior, you are deserving of heaven because of what Jesus has done for you on the cross. And I was in awe. I was like, no way. Oh, cool. Even though my mom and dad had been telling me that the first six years of my life, it finally clicked. And I was in awe. But I know every day since I was six years old, I have not been on fire for God every single day. I don't know if you guys can relate. Like there have been like months or weeks throughout my life where I just will not read my Bible. Anyone? Like, it happens. And, but I think one of the reasons, one of the reasons this happens to us is because we lose our feeling of awe. Like, what is awe anyway? I think of the emoji, like the awe, uh, and then a couple, like some awes is awesome, yeah? That's awesome. And if we want to reignite the flame, We need to remember that our God is an awesome God. He is the Alpha, the Omega, beginning and the end. All things have been created for him and through him. And we need to remember how big God is and how small we are and how much we need God. And remember that the gospel 
is for us every single day, not just the first day. Um, I was reading in the book of Revelations this week, and I came across these verses that just, I wasn't even thinking about the sermon, but I was thinking of like, I was like, wow, that, I had to read it again, because I was just like, whoa. So I'm going to share it with you right now. It's Revelations 2, 12 through 18, and these verses describe Jesus, because Jesus is still alive, and he is in heaven. So one day we'll see Jesus like this. And this is the same Jesus that's working in your life right now. And the disciple John got to see Jesus right here. In Revelations 2, 12 through 18, John says, Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking with me. And after turning, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the middle of the lampstands, I saw one like a son of man, clothed in a robe, reaching to the feet, and wrapped around the chest with a golden sash. His head and his hair were white like oil white wool like snow and his eyes were like a flame of fire his feet were like burnished bronze when it has been heated to a glow in a furnace and his voice was like the sound of many waters in his right hand he held seven stars and out of his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword and his face was like the sun shining in its strength when I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man, and he placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and of Hades. So this is our strong and mighty and awesome God, and this is true back then when John wrote this. This is true still today. This is Jesus right now in heaven, and Jesus is on, on your side, and Jesus loves you. Jesus is in your life. And I don't know if every day we think about that this is Jesus, you know? We think of Jesus, I mean, sometimes you don't even think about Jesus. We just go through our routine, you know? But this is Jesus, the Savior, your Savior that loves you. And if we want to reignite this flame, we can ask God to open our eyes to all the miracles that Jesus is doing all around us every single day. Like our strong and mighty God cares about your life. You might think it is so small and insignificant, but it matters so much to him. And all the coincidences in your life, are they really coincidences or are they God moments? And God has revealed himself through creation. Like surfing Sunday today, like the water, the reef, the fish underneath us, the mountains when you hike. Um, our bodies are so complex. Like all the things God's created, the mountains are his, the rivers are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing our God cannot do. Like awe ignites the flame. Secondly, we see devotion keeps the flame burning. Uh, verse 42, like these new Christians were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. So an overflowing of what the Holy Spirit did was pouring out of their lives. And this is what the first Christians naturally did because of the Holy Spirit. It's a good example for what we can do too. So they, they were devoted to the apostles' teaching. Literally, they had the apostles with them teaching. They were alive. Today, we have the Bible. They were devoted to fellowship, meaning hanging out together. They were devoted to the breaking of bread, meaning eating food together. They would go from house to house sharing meals, cooking for each other. And they were devoted to prayer. They were praising God and they knew the power of prayer. So as the gathering, we do model what we do after this. Like one third of our time today is spent on prayer. One third of our time is spent in the Bible. We have food afterwards. We have choked bananas back there. We hang out for like four hours if you want to stay the whole time. And all this happens in connect groups and at our last Friday night worship nights too. Like we are modeling our community after this. And of these things, most of you guys do these things. But if you want to be on fire for God, you need to be devoted to these things. Like devo devotions is a Christianese word. Like if you say that word any other place besides here, people will just look at you funny. Because you can be like devoted to watching The Office, to skipping class, to work. Um, the word Devotion in Greek means to persevere, to continue steadfastly. And verse 42 says they were continually devoting. So they're continually, continually steadfastly. And devotion is not a to-do list. It's an attitude of the heart. So Jesus loves you and is faithful to you. And because of what his faithfulness is to you, we love him and we are faithful to him back. Like, are you operating everything you do 
for God out of duty or out of love. If you want to keep the flame burning, remember the gospel is for you every day, not just the first day. We don't serve God because we have to. We serve God because we get to. Um, And remember the purpose of being devoted to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to breaking bread, and to prayer. The whole purpose of all that is loving Jesus, loving others, and making disciples. That's why we do what we do. Like, these are not your chores. These are our mission. Like, sometimes I don't feel like reading my Bible or hanging out with people as an introvert and praying. Um, But that's when we need to go back to the first part, the reignite the awe, reignite the flame through the awe. And when we have the awe, the awe inspires the action. The awe inspires the devotion. And devotion to the awesome creator brings devotion to his ways. Devotion keeps the flame burning. And thirdly, we see gathering makes the flame grow. We are the Waikiki Beach gathering. Um, Verse 44 through 47 in chapter 2, it says, All the believers were together and had all things in common, and they would sell their property and possessions and share them with all, to the extent that anyone had need. Day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. So if you think of like the wildfires in California and Oregon, Idaho, Montana, Colorado, they're all like their own fires. But when they meet up together, they're a super fire. And they're, power, they're way more powerful than what they would be by themselves. And it's the same with us. Each of us are little flames. And we come together right now. We are a big super fire. And we can do anything through the power of the Holy Spirit, more so together than by ourselves. Um, we need each other. We need to strengthen and encourage each other. And as iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another. And the Christians in the first church spent a lot of time together. It says every day they worshipped together. They went to each other's houses to hang out and for food. And they loved sharing all their possessions with each other. They were very generous. They were humble. They considered others more important than themselves. And they truly lived life together, loving others as a lifestyle. And this sounds like an amazing community to me, right? Like this sounds, the first one sounds probably like the best one. Let's, Let's do this. Um, and for us at the gathering, like during the first lockdown, like in March, April, and May, it was really different watching church on our phones, yeah? Like, hey, we're all watching. Oh, like 27 of us are watching. You can't see each other. And they're like, oh, that's cool, you know? But we had connect groups. And in our Zoom connect groups, I grew so much. And I saw all of you guys grow so much. Like, we were devoted and we kept the flame burning despite the circumstances. And in like June and August and September, we were gathered at the church in Manoa in the scorching hot heat. And there's about 20 of you here who were at Manoa every single Sunday. There's about like 20 of you here. And I just like to say, you guys are so devoted, (laughs) like awesome. Like you are devoted to gathering together. And I'm just so thankful. And I think that time meeting at the Church of Manoa was really a strengthening time for all of our faith as a smaller group together. Um, And I think it's so cool how even outside of Sundays and last Friday nights and connect groups, you guys are choosing to hang out with each other throughout the week. You guys are making new friends, meeting new people, and you are loving each other and hanging out with each other, having fellowship as a lifestyle every day throughout the week. This is what it's all about. It's not about Sundays. It's not about Fridays or Wednesdays. It's about every day with Jesus and with each other. And if you want the flame to grow, remember the gospel is for you every day, not just the first day. When we gather, you get to love others like Jesus loves you, and you get to receive love from others like Jesus loves them. Um, If you want the flame to grow, you must go where the other flames are. Like, we are the Waikiki Beach Gathering. We're a bunch of flames. We're one big flame right now. And after we leave, we are all brighter than before we came. So we can share our light with everyone throughout the week. Matthew 5.16 says, Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Like, we don't want to keep this little light hidden. We want to let it shine. As a church, as the Waikiki Beach Gathering, I think 
we are on fire for God. I see all of this in so many of you. Like we are passionately pursuing Jesus and the Holy Spirit is moving all around us. We can feel it like the song says. Like it's so clearly seen here. And this is year five and this is just the beginning. And if we want to stay on fire for God, we need to know awe ignites the flame. Devotion keeps it burning and gathering makes the flame grow. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, verse 47 will happen here for us too, where it says, the Lord will add to their number day by day those who were being saved. It's about loving Jesus, loving others, and making disciples, bringing more and more people, as many people as we can to heaven with us when this is all done, and experiencing life to the fullest here right now, here on earth. Every day is a great day with Jesus and you guys. Um, The simple gospel of Jesus is for you every single day. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So let's burn bright so we can shine this light. Amen. Dear Jesus, thank you that you are the light. God, thank you that you've lit up all of our lives. You are pretty bright. You're pretty awesome. And God, I pray that every day we would just live in awe of you. We'd look around at creation. We'd hear the birds. We'd see the mountains. We'd be thankful. We'd be humble. God, you are so awesome. And God, help us to have this passion, this devotion to grow in our faith, to grow closer to you. And God, I pray that you would make our flame grow because only you can do that, God. We cannot work up anything in ourselves to do it, God. It's all you working through us. Thank you, Jesus, for how much you love everyone here. Amen.